Hey guys, good morning. Welcome to another Monday Morning Minute. We're here at Green Dynamics in North Florida on another beautiful fall day. And today we're gonna to be talking about legustrums. Now you might say, Frank, come on, that sounds kind of boring. But we're not gonna talk about just the regular green leaf legustrum or big leaf legustrum, legustrum japonica. We're gonna talk about some of the different ones. Now all of these except for the sunshine legustrum I believe are sports of Ligustrum japonica, so there's an interesting plant fa fact for you. And I've heard that some of you have requested a deeper dive on things, so we're going to try to go a little be beneath the surface today and give you a few more details. Um, we do recommend checking with your local county extension office on planting instructions, but we will give you some here. We also recommend you check uh, local ordinances on water and fertilization. And just remember to be responsible and let's protect our environment out there because uh, we are the green industry and we want our planet to stay that way. In general, you want to dig the hole about two times as wide as your plant ball. You want to water the plant well while it's in the pot. And then uh, once you have the hole dug, you want to flood that hole. After that water soaks in, go ahead and put the plant in there. Put in your backfill that's been loosened and uh, you want to for sure at least make the plant level with the existing ground. Some people do recommend that you lift it up an inch or two. Um, and go ahead and pull the dirt in. You don't want to leave that top inch or two exposed because that will cause the plant to dry out. And some people would even suggest that you put a berm around the hole to hold the water. Next thing you want to do is water that plant again, soaking it well. And you'll want to put it on irrigation, preferably drip. And uh, make sure, if it's not on drip, that you water it every two to three days, depending on rainfall. Next, we do recommend mulch, uh, whether it's pine straw, which we have started to carry here, or some type of hard, hard, um, hardwood mulch, which we also have. Uh, but you do not want to put it up next to the stem. Uh, now, you also should provide a well-balanced fertilizer. We would suggest something like a 10-10-10 or something like that. You could even get fancy and do a timed release one. Um, we would recommend in the spring or early fall, not in the summer, and again, check your local regulations on fertilization. All of these plants do require or prefer full sun to partial shade, and they do have some salt tolerance due to the glossy, waxy leaf. And they are all evergreens. All right, well first we're going to start with Legustum recurve over here on my left. You can see we have a nice sample here. It's a little different than the large leaf Legustum that we talked about that all of these I believe are sports of. It grows a little bit more compact, a little slower, and the leaves are slightly smaller and in my opinion it stays fuller. It's a large evergreen shrub and as you can see the, waves are, the leaves are wavy, so a little bit different than the other one. You can see the undulations on the leaf, and it does have a little bit of a curved tip. Uh, to me, that's what makes it interesting enough to be different. It's a, it's a handsome foundation shrub or a screening plant, and it can get six to eight feet by six to eight feet. Uh, now, plants can't read, so uh, like I like to say, you might find that uh, it's a little different when you plant it, um, so uh, don't, don't call me on that. Okay, next we're going to have one of the newer introductions here behind me. This is Ligustrum sunshine. Uh, aptly named, as you can see, with the bright yellow foliage, and it has that year-round. Now, this, uh, the parentage on this is Ligustrum sinensis, or privet, which uh, is uh, invasive in a lot of our areas that we service, um, but this is sterile and non-invasive. has a smaller, thinner leaf, as you can see with the bright gold foliage there. Um, it is a lower and slower growing Ligustrum, getting to about three to six feet by maybe three to four feet. Okay, next we're gonna talk about Howard. This is Ligustrum Howard eye or Ligustrum yellow tip. As you can see, the bright yellow slash gold tips on the leaves, a nice lemon lime color to the ends, getting six to 10 feet by five to six. Also staying a little shorter than your common wax leaf Ligustrum. Somewhat deer tolerant. Emphasis on somewhat. Depends on how much deer pressure you have in your area. Now last but not least, another one of my favorites is Jack Frost Ligustrum. 
or Jumpin' Jack Frost, as I like to say. Uh, you can see here with the, uh, the yellow edges uh, to the leaves, and uh, depending on where you source them from, you might get an ivory color in there as well. It provides an excellent contrast to any landscape, and it is somewhat slower and lower growing than, again, the common Ligustrum japonica or large leaf or wax leaf Ligustrum. It is also somewhat deer tolerant. I know this is very popular up in the Carolinas, uh, getting five to eight feet by four to six feet. All right, guys, that's today's Monday Morning Minute on Ligustrums uh, here at Green Dynamics Nursery. We'll see you next time. Thank you.